So a few months ago, I was actually invited to check out this, the Anti-Gravity A1. It was a production model and they invited a bunch of creators out to test fly this drone over a go-karting track, which was really fun. And the objective of that event, of course, is just to get our immediate feedback. What are our thoughts around the drone? And I made a full video of that day experience. I'll make sure it's linked above as well as down below in the video description. Definitely something to check out because now we have the full production units that were sent out a few weeks ago for testing. And I'll tell you this much, they really fine tune a lot of those things that I found were kind of quirky back then. They fixed them now on this drone here. And of course, nothing's perfect. There's still a bunch of things that still can be enhanced in future versions. And I will talk about that in this video. But what's nice is that there's actually some surprises on this one that they didn't mention at the event that they were gonna have here on the actual production unit. So let's talk about those things and go through my experience flying the newest model now of the anti-gravity A1 drone. And if this is your first time checking it out and learning about this drone right here, basically it is a 8K 360 degree drone, which means you have a camera here at the very top. You also have a camera here at the bottom. On the front, we have obstacle avoidance sensors. And with the cameras being above the prop line here at the very top, and also with the camera here being below the prop line, you can now stitch that entire video and not see the propellers in your shots. And when you take off, these actually will automatically retract. I'm just pushing them back now because you can still do that. But they will retract and then now you don't see the feet, you don't see the propellers because of how the cameras are positioned above and below this drone. Next question is why would I want a 360 drone compared to a regular or standard drone? The idea behind this is for you to fly into areas and not necessarily worry too much about trying to frame the shot perfectly like you would with a traditional drone. Because we are shooting everything in 360, all you have to do for the most part is fly the drone in that vicinity or in that area, and then you reframe the video later in post-processing, whether you edit on your mobile phone or edit on the Insta360 Studio desktop app. You can now take that 360 degree footage and reframe it and choose which angle you want from that shot and then you can export that footage out separately. And of course the pros and the cons of 360 footage is the same thing that we have to deal with here. There is a little bit more work that you're gonna have to do in post-production for you to reframe the video and footage that you want then you need to export that back out. So it's not necessarily a type of camera or drone that you're just always gonna fly up there and just get one type of shot. There is a little bit extra work for you to do in order to get the proper composition by reframing. But what's really cool is that they came out with this right here. We have a replaceable lens kit for the anti-gravity A1. This was something that was not mentioned at the event. It's something that did come out on the X5. Everyone loves the replaceable lens option here. Having this kit is definitely clutch because when you get the drone for the first time, you're so used to just putting the drone down. Just like you pull out any other drone, you normally get it out of the box, which is a pretty cool box. This little clamshell case perfectly fits the drone, but you normally will just take it right out of the box, put it down on the ground, and if you don't pull those legs out, you are going to be resting the camera right on the floor if these aren't out. Next feature you should know about the drone. When it comes down to weight, they actually do have two separate batteries. This one right here is a 2360 milliamp battery, which is a lower capacity battery. And once you plug that in, put it on top of the scale, 249 grams. So if you want to have a drone that sits under that 250 gram regulation where Drones over 250 grams here in the US, you need to register the drone, but they also have a higher capacity battery, which comes in at a 4,345 milliamps. Drop it on the scale, comes in at 290 grams. So it does come over that limit. Now, what am I gonna need to fly the A1? As you can see here, we don't have a traditional remote controller. We do have this right here, which is called the anti-gravity motion controller. So you will need that as well as this right here, which is the anti-gravity vision goggles. Now they sent me the infinity bundle, which does come with pretty much all of the goodies here. We have the higher capacity batteries, which also has the battery hub, which is really nice. I, the build quality and all this feels 
premium in your hands. And I really like the battery hub. It is sleek, compact, it has a nice screen here. And the Infinity Bundle does come with the higher capacity ones. We also have this right here, which is the battery for your goggles. It comes with a lanyard here at the very top. So you just put this around your neck, plug this in. And I do like the fact that they have a lockable plug here. So in case you accidentally knock it away. Now after flying the DJI FPV drone and their goggles, I do like the fact that they integrated the battery into the head strap. Kind of keeps this thing all as one piece. We're here. Kind of the older school style where you have the wire kind of dangling down. So like I said, there's some things I think they'll be able to improve on. However, what is nice is that they only weigh 340 grams. So if you are gonna be wearing them all day, at least they come in a lot lighter than some of the other ones on the market. Next, let's talk about flight experience because that is what this drone is more about. It's about a unique type of experience that you don't really get from traditional types of drones. Here with this drone, the transmission, definitely a lot better. And of course, I wasn't flying around other people. So I do wanna test it out to see if there might be any other interference if I'm flying around a bunch of other people that have drones. But for the most part, just out there flying at the park, I didn't have any problems flying it out there a few hundred to about a thousand feet away and transmission was pretty solid. Now I haven't done a full range test on this thing just yet. I will take it out there once I go out into the desert or just open area where I'm able to get out there a little bit further with a couple spotters just to see how far we could take this out if we have a nice open unobstructed area for us to test it out in. Every once in a while, even when flying this, I did see some transmission warnings come up. However, my bars seem pretty good and I didn't have any like full cutouts. The latency wasn't there, like it wasn't like jittery or you know slowing down or anything like that. I did see some warnings come up, but the transmission seemed to be still solid when I was out there flying. Now the two ways you can fly the drone, the first one is free motion mode. Second one is called FPV mode. And when I was doing the demo a few months ago, I was normally in free motion mode. And initially when I started flying it in that mode, it really threw me off because I was so used to flying in, I would say the FPV style mode on the other drones, on the DJI drones. So it did take me a second to relearn how to fly in that free motion mode. Now when you're out there flying in free motion mode, all you have to do is take the drone up in the air by pushing this toggle up, drone will go straight up in the air. Then when you want to go forward, you just hit accelerate and pull in that trigger just like that. If you want the drone to go up, and forward, all you do is pull back on the stick. There's a little circle on screen. Pull back and the drone will start going up just like that. Press it down, the drone will go down just like this. The one thing that's cool about free motion mode is that you can actually fly the drone straight just by hitting that accelerator, but you can look around with your goggles while the drone is going in a particular direction. Then if you wanna turn and fly the drone, a couple different ways there too. You can actually turn your motion controller to a specific direction. Pull that trigger again and the drone will turn with you and fly. Or you can actually use this little scroll wheel right here. And as you scroll it, the drone will actually turn little by little as you scroll on this wheel. One thing I did mention to them, which I did talk about in my first video was, I kind of wish that this scroll wheel was more infinite where I would just press it to the right or left and it would continue nonstop going. But what happens is that it actually has a stop to it. So when you turn, It'll actually go until your scroll stops. Now in that FPV mode, if you've ever flown some of the DJI ones, I would say that would be a lot more familiar with you. You don't necessarily move your whole body like you do in that free motion mode. FPV mode kind of keeps everything here in your arms and your wrists. So if you wanted to turn the drone while it's in the air, you actually just twist. The drone will then turn left to right. Like the same thing, accelerator goes forward, you point it up, it goes up, point down, point goes down. And I felt like I was able to get a little bit smoother transitions and shots just by kind of staying more stationary body wise and just flying with my wrist. So just accelerating like that. So the drone goes forward. And then when I'm flying through obstacles, I just kind of have to twist just like this left and right. And the drone will then slowly turn. So I felt a little bit more comfortable doing the wrist movements versus doing it in free motion where you're kind of turning your body around. And then also free motion allows you to then look around at different places while you're in flight. Now, speaking of that menu system and how to change things out, yes, you are going to be flying the drone with FPV goggles, just like this. So you aren't looking at a screen, you aren't looking at your mobile phone. Now to access the menu system on the goggles, all you have to do is press this button right there. 
menu will then slide up on screen, which looks really, really cool. Then you'll see a line with a little pointer at the end, and that's your kind of like your mouse cursor, you could say. And all you do is you select whatever option you want on screen by using the motion controller and pointing and triggering once you want to select one of those options. Now, speaking of that menu system, the one thing I did notice is that the menu layout on the screen, they kind of made it so it's like laid out this way and then it kind of turns this way a little bit, kind of augmented reality menu, which is slanted and curved, but everything else is flat in the background. I don't know. Maybe there could be an option where everything is just flat on screen and not necessarily kind of curved to make it look like an Iron Man UI. Now, while I was exploring the menu system, there's actually a bunch of intelligent modes that we didn't have back then when I tested it out a few months ago. We have a bunch of them now on the Anti-Gravity A1. The first mode that I saw was called Deep Track, which I thought was really cool because if you guys know me, I like to actually use tracking a lot on my standard drones that have that tracking option. You can now track a car or a vehicle just by selecting Deep Track. Then you just point the controller to the subject that you want to track. So if you want to track a car, you just point the controller to the car, press C1 here at the very bottom. It'll then activate the tracking box. And once you select it, you just hit go and the drone will actually follow and track that vehicle. Next one we have is Sky Genie. And if you guys are familiar with things like quick shots, basically you can take the drone up in the air, you can select which mode you wanna do. Do you wanna do a drone do you wanna do an orbit? Again, C1, select the subject, press it again, and the drone will perform that quick shot. Along with drony, you have other ones like circle or orbit shot. You also have the kind of rise up and above. I believe there's about five or six different quick shots or sky genie shots that you're able to do. And again, you now can use this drone almost like a traditional style drone. And last one we have here is sky path or waypoints basically. All you have to do is fly the drone up to an area, click it, click that C1. It'll then drop a pin at that waypoint, fly it to the next area, Set another waypoint, you could do it at multiple areas, and then you can go back to the beginning, hit start, drone will automatically go to waypoint number one, and then start performing that route. What's really cool is that while it's performing the route of that waypoint, you can now go in your goggles and just start looking around, which I thought was really cool. So if you don't wanna worry about piloting the drone, and you just want to worry about experiencing the surroundings, you can set up a couple waypoints to just go from you know point A to point B to point C. And while it's running those paths, you can now just put the goggles on and just continuously look around and kind of experience everything around the drone in 360 and not worry about actually piloting or flying the drone. You can just worry about what you see through the goggles. Once you're done flying, all you do is press and hold this red button there, return to home gets activated. The drone will automatically turn around fly back to where you have your home point set and come down and land. Now, when you are out there flying with goggles, the one thing you will notice, of course, is that you don't see anything around you because you're looking at the screens of what your drone sees. All you have to do is double click that button there and then now you'll be able to see in the goggles what this camera sees right outside. So there's a couple of times I was out there flying and I could hear people behind me because I was out of park and I kind of heard someone park right next to me. So all I did was just double tap that turn around and look just to see who was there. I just saw that it was somebody that was going for a walk, came back around, double tapped it, and now I'm back looking at what the drone sees. They have a setting called Visual Cockpit, which was kind of cool if you just want to have this little animation. Of, I think I had, the one I had was a like, like, a, like a dragon uh, in the very front of your screen where it kind of looks like it's a dragon flying through the air. You also have a defog function at the very bottom, so if your goggles are starting to fog up, all you do is go to the menu, hit defog, a fan kicks in here to clear up the fog on the inside. And if you wanna change out your camera settings, your motion controller settings, as well as your transmission settings, that's all at the very bottom of the menu. Just select one of those and change it out, again, using this as your pointer slash mouse. Now with the standard battery, which is the 2360 milliamp battery, they are rating this battery to go for about 24 minutes. And with the higher capacity battery, which is the 4345 milliamp battery, they're rating this to fly for about 39 minutes. The one thing that is nice is the battery goggles actually last pretty long time. I was out there flying, I believe I flew about five batteries and 
Battery on the goggles, still good to go. The actual motion controller, still good to go. These actually last a long time. I didn't do a full test on those. Now while flying in that FPV mode, it definitely is, for me, it felt a little bit more comfortable, but the one thing that I would still be cautious about is that you are still flying a drone that is a little bit bigger, does not have any prop guards on it, so you're not, I would say, comfortable, or I'm not comfortable enough, to fly this drone the same way I would fly something like an Avada or a Neo that have a, I would say, a more full cage around the drone. Because if you do clip something, hit a branch, hit a tree or anything like that, you're more likely gonna crash the drone. Now, if you do happen to crash it, I know Anti-Gravity is coming out with a CARE program, very similar to what we have on some of the other drones out there, where if you do crash it for, I believe, a small fee, I'll, I'll make sure I put all that information down below, that you'll be able to now get either the drone fix or replacement drone. So if you are looking for a different, unique experience when you're out there flying a drone, this might be something you might want to look into. Anti-Gravity A1. Of course, I'll leave all of the prices, the bundles that they have. They have standard bundles, the Infinity bundle. They have, I think they're going to have three different bundles. I'll leave those linked down below as well as the prices down there so you guys can see what options you have for this drone. I'm going to have more videos coming out that go into a lot more detail on a bunch of these flight modes. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. This is Aldrin Stasio with FlightPath.com. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.